Okay, this is uh, Idaho's Mammoth Cave. Notice the warning signs, there may be rattlesnakes in the area. I haven't been, seen any rattlesnakes yet, but obviously it's the kind of country that would have a rattlesnake. So notice how the land here is mostly flat, some hills in the distance, and then there's a trench right here. This trench leads to the um, entrance to Mammoth Cave, Idaho's Mammoth Cave. Not the real Mammoth Cave, just the Idaho one. <laughs> but this one is impressive. It is nice and tall and long and wide. I don't know the exact dimensions. And I got permission from the owner to go past the sign at the end. He said, as long as I promise not to die and sue him, I'm good. So I'm going to go to the end as far as I dare. Oops, there's a butterfly. I think last time I was here, there was somebody saying that there was a rattlesnake by the entrance, but I don't remember seeing it or getting it on camera. It's not the kind of thing a normal person would lie about. You know, I was thinking, you know, it'd be a good prank is take an empty bucket with a lid on it so nobody could see that it's empty and tell people, I found a rattlesnake, where do you want it? And then just pretend to dump it out. But yeah, you'd probably freak people out and get sued for that one. So <laughs> you got to keep limits to pranks. If people laugh when you're done, that means it was a funny prank. If people get mad and punch you when you're done, yeah, that means it wasn't funny. Oops, here's some people. Hi. Are you going in or out? Or both? <laughs> We're waiting for the dad to come back. Okay. Got rid of the stroller. It's a long cave. It, it took me about 20 minutes to do. And I got permission to go past the official end sign too. Nice. So I'll be... Depends. It's not too scary. The entrance is tiny, but after this, it's pretty big. Oh, so. The got stuck in the corner, so I said, okay, we'll wait. Okay. Yeah, you have to leave. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Whoops. Let's see if my flashlight will behave. There we go. Oh yeah, I was just turning on my flashlight. It's dark in here. Ooh. Yeah, this is a different flashlight. I just went through here with a different GoPro. The flashlight there, it, uh, I had the diffuser partly unblocked, so it made a bright spot. This one, the diffuser, it's making the light a lot more even. Not quite as bright. Bye. Notice how there's like white stuff coming down there. Not sure if that's animal stuff or something else. Okay. Okay, here we go. See, over here is the wall where people used to write their names. It's weird they do it here because usually people, when they write their names in a cave, they get to the end and then write it to prove they got to the end. But here, the, the first cave explorers put their names in the caves. Lava walls, 1902. Please do not deface the cave or signs. Thank you. Well, kind of late now, but yeah. From time to time, a type of cave bear used the cave for home in a winter hibernating place. Oh, I forgot to ask him how old this cave is. Notice how the floor is damp. It's a very flat cave, except for the breakdown rocks. It's, there's hardly any slope at all. Notice how shiny the rocks are there. It's probably from hydrophobic bacteria. Looks like there's a little bit, not a lot. Usually the wetter the cave, it'll have more of that. Which is ironic, you'd think if it's hydrophobic, it'd be in a cave without water, but whatever.
I want to pan up here to show the ceiling. See how this rock has got gold colored hydrophobic bacteria. And up there, there's silver colored hydrophobic bacteria. Wish I knew the species name. I probably read it once and I forgot. Like I said, that's common in wet caves. You go to ape cave in the winter, the dang thing practically glows in the dark. Just remember to wear your raincoat if you're going to go caving in the winter. Most caves are closed in the winter anyway to protect hibernating bats. Okay, so here we go. Spectacular eruptions, eruptions of the volcanoes impressed the ancient civilizations, and the destruction was evidence of the wrath of the gods. The ripples in the rocks at the top of the cavern was caused by the huge amount of the gas given off. This was mostly water vapor with small amounts of sulfur and hydrogen. This cave is in its natural estate. Estate? Okay, don't get me started. Oh well, I guess it's technically true. <laughs> All right. Notice how rough the walls are here. There's a lot of uh, cool mineral deposits. I pointed this out earlier. See how it's pink there? I'm not sure if that's natural or if that's from somebody taking a marker, marking it. Either way, it would make sense. I don't, I don't approve of vandalism, obviously, but I can definitely understand why some people were tempted to mark their territory. Okay, well, anyway, there's a pretty white wall there. So now looking across, you can see how the wall is white on the bottom half and then not so white on the top. Same story. At the bottom, they have all this cool mineral. <clears throat> I'm assuming the yellow is sulfur. And then up here, it's more of a brown. It does look like it has that gold hydrophobic bacteria, though. Pretty cool. Hmm. Notice here, the ceiling, well, where I'm standing, the ceiling's 10 feet wide. In the middle, it's more like 15 feet, 20 feet wide, pretty big. And then ahead, it's easily 30 feet tall. I said wide, I meant tall. Duh. Anyway, look how huge it is, though. Notice the floor, the mud floor, and it's got the spots from rain dropping, water dropping from above. And here it almost looks like water flowed. I'm not sure why the water is so deep, the hole is so deep there. If somebody is digging or if that's natural. Most volcanoes are composed of basalt with small bodies of andesite, rhyolite, and obsidian. Okay, cool. Now I know.